Okay, I'm going to talk about binding derivatives today, and I'm hoping to use the limit process to do at least one problem. Um, there are lots of shortcuts for finding derivatives, but first you kind of have to know how to do this. So it says if, they were, if we're looking for the derivative of f at x, it's given by this idea here. We have f prime at x is equal to the limit as the change of x approaches 0 of f of x plus change of x minus f of x over change in x. And if you look at this a little bit more, this is really just that thing in algebra that you knew, which was m, the slope, is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. It's just gotten a little bit more clever to cover more uh, complicated functions. Um, you can read this a little bit more, but let's try to find the derivative with respect to x if f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x. And it said, we're going to just follow this rule right here, and we're going to just use this really simple idea of fit the, which is simply to fill in the blanks. So we're going to do that, and it says here that f prime of x is equal to the limit as the change in x approaches 0 of f of x. But here's our f of x here, and it says our f of x is equal to, we want to put this x plus change in x here. If you look right here, it says x plus change of x, and that's this one. But our function is a square function. So our function is a square function, so this square right here is this square right here. So just to continue, it says plus. Now this 2 right here is this one, 2 times x plus change in x. And now if you look, it says here, it says minus f of x. Well, we know that f of x, we're going to subtract out this whole f of x, that f of x is x squared plus 2x. So we're going to subtract out the x squared, my, excuse me, plus 2x. I got ahead of myself a little bit. And remember that this whole thing right here, this whole thing right here, over change in x. So here's change in x. Change in x. Now we're going to foil this. We're going to foil this piece right here. We use foil here. Actually, a better term for this is binomial expansion, and I'm going to do a video on that, and I hope you'll watch it because I think in calculus it's something that you really, really need to know. Um, so anyway, and here obviously we're going to distribute this to this, and this to this, and then this to this, and we're going to distribute this negative sign through this quantity over here. So let's take a look at what that might look like. So if we did our binomial expansion here, x plus change of x times itself is actually x squared plus 2x change in x plus change in x squared. That gives us this. Now we'll distribute this to this, and we'll get plus 2x plus 2 changes of x. I'm going to distribute this negative sign. Negative times a positive is a negative. Negative times a positive is a negative. So we get minus, minus x squared minus 2x. Remember, all over this change of x up here. So this change of x. Now, here's something that is going to be really important to your professors, and that's that you keep up your notation, so I kind of didn't here. You have to, again, remember that we're taking a limit here, and we're taking the limit as the change in x approaches 0. That is to say, as we move in the, in the x direction, just very, very small amounts. Now, we're going to simplify here. So we're going to simplify. You look right here, I think what we're going to find out is this. A lot of this stuff cancels out. We have a positive x squared here, we have a negative x squared here, and yeah, we have a 2x here and a negative 2x here. That cancels out, doesn't it? Now, finally, we get down to some really good stuff, actually, because if you look at these remaining terms, they all have change in x in them. They all have these change of x's in them. 
This one actually has two factors of change in x. And this one has a single factor of change in x here, doesn't it? Why is that so good? Because right now we can't take this limit. We can't let the change in x go to 0. Because if we do, our function will become undefined. We'll have a denominator that equals 0. So here's the issue that we're having. So what we're going to do here is factor this change of x out. Again, I'm going to start this limit process thing. So we're going to take the limit. Nice handwriting. If the change in x goes to 0, we're going to factor out a change of x here. So we have change of x times 2x plus a single change of x plus 2. Check your algebra here, see if this works. This is me factoring out the greatest common factor. Change of x times 2x is 2x change of x. Change of x times change of x is change of x squared. Change of x times positive 2 gives me back our two changes of x. Remember, we still have this change of x at the bottom, don't we? This change of x here. But pretty soon, I think it goes away, doesn't it? So these are factors here, so we can cancel these factors out. That is to say, change of x over change of x is equal to 1, isn't it? Finally, that really gets us to a great place now that we get, one last time, we get the limit as the change in x approaches 0 of 2x plus change of x plus 2. Now we can actually let change of x go to 0, can't we? Let change of x equal 0. Why? Because we no longer have a domain issue here, do we? Here if we put in change of x with 0, we'd have a domain issue. This is a polynomial. We don't have a domain issue here. This thing just goes to 0. If we let this thing go to 0, change of x is 0. We say change of x is 0. Well, what would that do to us? We say here, well, change of x is 0. And we'd have 2x plus 0 plus 2, and that is certainly defined, isn't it? Okay. Let's take a look at what that would, what that would, hap what would happen with that. We'd get then, now we finally get to the very end, which is, looks a lot like the beginning, because we were looking for f prime at x, weren't we? And now we have x prime at x equals 2x plus 2. 2x plus 2. I think that worked out okay. So, all right. Let that be the example we do for today. I hope it was really helpful. Um, please remember some stuff here. When we go back to this, this is really fill in the blank stuff. Fill in the blanks, right? This is the new x value. This is the old one. That is the new f of x value. And this is the old f of x value. This is the y sub 2 minus y sub 1. It is fill in the blanks. Remember also, what is the rule with change in x? The thing that, remember, a common mistake about change of x is that people think they can divide and take this change out or take or factor out the x, cancel out the x by doing some kind of division. Not possible, okay? All right, hope that was helpful.